For at TV, the world is thinking. So we're going to move now from this integrated part of the brain, which becomes developed well when you have integrative communication. So now we're going to move to the triangle where we talk about relationships. If the brain is the mechanism where energy and information is flowing through all those synaptic connections, and you can have an integrated brain or, and you live in harmony, or a non-integrated brain and you move toward chaos or rigidity, which by the way explains almost the entire diagnostic manual of psychiatric disorders, it's a different way of thinking about it, but with rigidity and chaos or a blend of the two, you can explain, well, let's say it, you always have to say virtually every, but I have found, found an exception, virtually every symptom in the psychiatric manual of disorders. Even though we never talk about integration from a psychiatric point of view, for, from our point of view in interpersonal neurobiology, it's our major organizing principle. Now in relationships, if the brain is the mechanism that energy and information flows, a relationship can be defined as how we share energy and information. So if you have a parent who doesn't care about the inner life of a child, if he or she is just oblivious to feelings or thoughts, beliefs, attitudes, intentions, desires, longings, wishes, dreams, all the stuff that's the subjective richness of our inner life. If you have someone who's not interested in that, and believe it or not, that's 20% of the US population, this is what research shows, that child is gonna live in an emotional desert and the parts of her brain that can become integrated when there would be emotional communication actually don't develop well. So in the developing mind, you'll see the details of how that happens, and in parenting from the inside out, it's spelled out for parents. But the take-home message here is that the various forms of insecure attachment can be seen through this lens as impairments to integration.